Hey y'all, it's your girl Slanko and welcome back to the Slanko Play series. Today, we're taking a ride on the DeLorean back to 1986 to a far, far forgotten place that only exists in myth and legends. The family living room. Since I was a young Slanko, I forever had a happy song in the cockles of me wee heart. It was from a game what yonder years ago me siblings played. Avast, there was no player three, so all I have are the memories of the sweet, sweet melodies playing from the TV screen, where two mythical beasts, nay, giant lizards, nay, dragons, real life dragons in the game, these were two fanciful little dragons that blew bubbles and ate fruit, which also describes my brother. But again, I was a wee young thing, and I couldn't at all grasp the seriousness in nature of the game. Now it's 30 years later and I have this intense desire to check out Bubble Bobble on NES. Let's take a ride and see if we can get through this one. The thing that I admire the most about the visuals are the cool elaborate patterns of the stage designs that would even make Steve Wozniak weep tears of salty joy. <laughs> <laughs> Although the background is a simple screen, it allows the patterns of the stages to truly shine. There are some very intricate looking stages that mimic the design of the enemies and also some cool stages that spell out words, SOS, ouch, high tech. I've even seen some stages that had some initials, perhaps maybe a gaming signature to whoever designed that level. Almost as if they were taking a page out of Warren Robinette and the first video game Easter. I also enjoyed seeing a lot of the clever ideas that the game threw at me. Seeing like every stage just come up with something new really kept me very engaged. The sprites were also very well done. Bob and Bob are completely adorable, and I like how the game gave the bubbles an authentic look, giving that visual cue that the bubbles were turned from green to red when they're about to pop. With the simplistic background, it allows for the sprites of the dragons and the baddies to really be seen in their 8-bit glory. The sounds you hear in the game are pretty lackluster, but they get the point across. <laughs> Some examples of the sounds you'll hear in the game are blowing bubbles, jumping, getting hit, destroying enemies, and collecting items. You'll also hear some beeps and boops from the projectiles that the enemies are throwing your way. Musically, you'll hear the same song for 99 levels. What would drive a sane man mad would drive a madman sane. It's a catchy tune, I'm not gonna lie. Oh my no, God! No, God, please, no! 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 I could definitely see it getting a little bit irritating for a bit, so my only criticism would be to maybe add an additional two or three songs just to change it up a bit. When it comes to the gameplay, you control one out of two the dragons. The moveset is pretty standard. You're able to jump on different platforms and shoot bubbles to capture the enemies which then you must pop using your body to defeat them. After you defeat the enemies, they leave behind such items such as gems and fruits to add to your high score. Make sure you pop them because if you don't pop them on time, they are not gonna be happy when they break out of that bubble. The more enemies that you pop at the same time, the higher the points and the higher the high score. 
You'd think with all this pleasantry, you'd just be able to take your time and enjoy the scenery, pleasantly enjoying the game. Absolutely not. If you're taking too long to defeat the enemies, the stage is gonna tell you to hurry up. When that happens, the music starts to speed up and the enemies enter a frenzy and start moving quicker. If that's not enough to cause you slight stress, <laughs> there's more. If you continue to take too much longer to clear the stage, the enemy called the Skelo Monster appears and chases you until 1. You defeat all the monsters on the stage, or 2. The monsters or the Skelo Monster defeats you. Once you defeat all the enemies in a level, you can happily <laughs> dive deeper into this 100 plus level cave to save your loved ones. One essential moveset in this game is learning how to bounce on the bubbles. Jumping on the bubbles will help you to reach higher platforms. Without this skill, there are even some stages that you cannot even complete. I had a really, really hard time pulling this move off consistently, but when I finally got it, it was a sigh of relief. Maybe if I had an instruction manual of some sort, I would have been able to not spend so much time trying to learn this move. Hashtag bring back instruction manuals. And uh, we finally get to level 100. The final stage, the final boss, super drunk. I was so pumped to get here, guys. You guys have no idea. But I was here for at least an hour. The boss does exactly what you think he'd be doing as his name implies. My man was throwing Coors bottles at your girl. The only way to defeat him was to hit him 60 times with thunder bubbles. I don't know whose tears were real, his or mine. <laughs> I'm proud of the outcome, but remember this game can be played with two players. And I had a feeling if I did have a buddy to play with, this might have been a more pleasant experience for me. The joy of completing this game. Oh my gosh, I was so ecstatic, but that quickly dampened when they threw at me the bad ending. A bad ending? What do you mean? Like, to get through all of this crap, 100 levels of pain, and that's what I get? I gotta say, I was not happy at all. The positive spin is that if you're inclined, it does offer a great replay value now that we know that there's multiple endings to achieve. Let's just be happy we have an ending to showcase because this game was pretty challenging. In conclusion, as stressful as the game really was, I did have a really nice time revisiting this classic. The music brought back those childhood memories and although I didn't achieve the best ending, any ending gave me the satisfaction that I was able to complete Bubble Bobble. I gotta give it to Taito and the OG Bubble Bobble. The success of this title lives on today as there are many, many sequels now. The original game has been ported to over 19 platforms and has also birthed two sub-series, the Rainbow Island series and of course Bust the Move. Thank you guys so much for watching the latest Slanko Plays video. Let me know in the comments below if you've ever played Bubble Wobble and what are your thoughts about the game. Also, let me know in the comments if there's any games you'd like to see me play and review on the channel. I think that'll be a fun twist to things. Um, don't forget to like the video, subscribe, and tell your friends about the channel so we can keep growing this awesome community. Thank you so much for your time, and I'll see you guys next time.